So I'm going to give an example of Des Argues' theorem from a past test. So this is a special case of Des Argues' theorem, and I will go ahead and explain the case without reading this to you. Uh, so I'm going to have at different points A, B, and C in this picture. So I'm going to assume all three of these points and all three of these points, all six of them, are different. And I have the lines A, A prime, B, B prime, and C, C prime here. They're parallel. So in terms of Des Argues' theorem, we have these lines intersecting at X before this X is in the projective plane at infinity. Uh, so it's, it's not in the finite plane. And we also have parallel lines A, C, and A prime, C prime in this picture. Uh, they have a different slope, so they're going to be also intersecting at a point at infinity and, and not in the finite plane. Now we look at B prime, A prime, and B, A, and they intersect at some point P. And I'm going to assume that there's only one point where they intersect. They're not on top of each other, these two lines. And I have B prime, C prime, and B, C intersecting at some point Q. Now here the notation has differed from earlier in the course. I called A prime C and A C uh, where they intersected Q before. Um, so now I guess we'll think of this as being some point R at infinity where they intersect. And the Q is where B C and B prime C prime intersect. So what conclusion should we make from Des Argues' theorem? Well, the points P, Q, and what I just called R here, where A, C, and A prime, C prime intersect, should be on the same line. Now remember, this point R at infinity is where all lines with a certain slope intersect. So all lines where the slope is the same as A, C here, because A prime, C prime, and A, C went through this point R. So that means the line P, Q must also have that same slope. So the conclusion to make here is that PQ must be parallel to AC and A prime C prime. So again, we know that AC and A prime C prime are parallel, but what we want to prove is that the line PQ is parallel to them. So either one of them would be fine. So that would be the conclusion of Des Argues' theorem. We don't want to use Des Argues' theorem to prove that. We're trying to prove this variation on Des Argues' theorem. So again, the information we have is that A, A prime, B, B prime, and C, C prime are parallel. A, C, C and A prime, C prime are parallel. And then A, B, and A prime, B prime intersect at P, and B, C, and B prime, C prime intersect at Q. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do with this. So this is going to be a fill in the blank to finish the proof. So we have these three lines, which we said were parallel. And I say that this means that this is true. So where is this coming from? Well, this is the vector going from A to A prime, so it's parallel to this line. This is the vector going from B to B prime, so it's parallel to this line. And this is the vector going from C to C prime, so it's parallel to this line. So since these lines are parallel, these vectors are going to have to be parallel. And if two vectors are parallel, that means they're multiples of each other. So A, A prime will be a multiple of B, B prime. So if, for example, if K1 were two here, that would tell us that the vector A, A prime is twice as long as B, B prime, and it's going in the same direction. But these three vectors need to be going in the same direction. They're just multiples of each other uh, because these three lines are given as being parallel. And what I want to do is to look at three equations here, these two being equal, and then these two being equal. And then lastly, we'll look at this one and this one being equal. And for all those equations, we want to do something similar. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different in the end, but something similar. Uh, so the first thing I do is to put all the a's and b's and all the primes on the other side. So I'm going to put primes on one side and the other variables on the other side. So I'm going to ahead and take the a over here and be minus k1 times b, and take this on the other side. I'll have a prime minus k1 b prime. So the primes are on one side and the other points are on the other side. So you might remember the goal. We want to divide by the sum of the coefficients, 1 minus k1. 
That's the same on both sides. And if we can divide by that, we'll get something that looks like what we have down here on the bottom line here. So that's the goal is divide by the sum of the coefficients. So the answer to the next question is, we wanted to make sure k1 is not one because I want to divide by one minus k1. I don't want to divide by zero. So we want to show that k1 does not equal one. So let me put that in here. And now we want to explain why k1 doesn't equal one. So assume k1 equals one. Then if I look at this equation up here, k1 being one means that the vector then from b to a is the same as the vector from b prime to a prime. So these two vectors will be equal. So ba would equal b prime a prime. But then, what does that mean about the lines a, b, and a prime, b prime? Well, they're going to be either parallel or on top of each other because these two vectors are, are, are parallel, are equal. Then, uh, since they're equal or they're parallel, we get that these two lines have to be parallel. So these are parallel, or they could be equal. In either case, we get a contradiction. This point P was supposed to be the only point where these two lines intersect. And if they're parallel, they're not intersecting. And if they're equal, then every point's a point of intersection. So uh, this contradicts. the definition of P. So our assumption is wrong and K1 does not equal one. Okay, so that would be an argument then for why K1 does not equal one. So uh, what do we do? Again, after we get that, we're going to just divide by one minus K1 on both sides to get this equation. And then how do we use that equation before when we did similar arguments? We looked at this theorem one, which I have down here on the bottom of the screen here. What does this theorem tell us? It gives us that if you have two points A and B that are distinct like we have, then C is on the line AB if and only if C is, is some one minus T times A plus T times B for some T. So, if we want to make this look like that theorem, I could take T, let's do that, T here equal to a minus K1 divided by one minus K1. Okay, so then we have T times B like we have down here. And do we have one minus T? Well, remember the sum of these two, the way we did this is going to be one. These add up to one. And there's only one thing you can add to t to get one, and that's one minus t. So this has to be one minus t. You can do that directly. One minus this would be one plus k1 over one minus k1. Rewrite the one as one minus k1 over one minus k1. And you'll have one minus k1 plus k1 over one minus k1. And you'll see that's one over one minus k1. So you can just check that directly. If this is t, this is one minus t. Or you can just use the fact that if this is t, there's only one thing that you can add to this to get one, and that's going to be one minus t. So these add to one, so this has to be one minus t. So we have something of this form down here, this one minus t a plus t b. So that means that by this theorem, this point has to be a point on line a b. Remember, this is a point. You're taking some number times a plus some number times b, where these are points. We're adding, we're getting some point. This has to be on the line AB. That's what theorem one's telling us. And similarly, uh, this is T, the same T here. Uh, this will be one minus T. 
And so this will have to be a point on the line A prime B prime. And so since we have a point on the line AB and on the line A prime B prime, they're the same point, there's only one point like that, that's P. So P is equal to this and this. I'm only gonna use that P is equal to this. If P is equal to this, that gives us then after multiplying by one minus K1 to get rid of fractions, that one minus K1 times P is one times A plus a negative K1 times B. So this is what we get. Again, setting this equal to P, multiplying by one minus K1, we get one minus K1P equals one times A plus a minus K1 times B. So we get that equation. Now what I want to do is to take this equation here, set these equal to each other, and again, put the things without primes on one side and the other things on the other side. So I put the minus K1B on the other side, so I have K1B minus K2C, and brought the K2C prime on this side, so I have K1B prime minus K2C prime. So again, that's just rearranging this equation to get this. And here, I'm wanting the student to figure out what to go here, basically doing the same argument without having to necessarily write down the whole thing. So the idea was to divide by the sum of these on both sides, K1 minus K2 on both sides. And then uh, do theorem one again, where in this case, T would be minus K2 over K1 minus K2. This would be one minus T then times B. This would be a point then on line BC. And similarly, you get a point on line B prime C prime here. So you have a point on both of them. And that's what we called Q for this problem. So Q would equal K1B minus K2C over K1 minus K2. You multiply by K1 minus K2, and you're going to get that K1 minus K2 times Q is equal to K1B minus K2C. So that's what we're getting for two. And the only thing we didn't check there is whether we could really divide by K1 minus K2. So you would need to really check to make this analogous argument that K1 doesn't equal K2. And just to clear up that, if K1 were to equal K2, uh, notice that you could factor out uh, the, the K1 from here, and you would have K1 times B minus C, because K1 equals K2. And you have K1 times B prime minus C prime. And so uh, the vectors from C to B and the vectors from C prime to B prime would be the same vector. Um, in particular, they'd be parallel. And that would give you a contradiction because again, these have to intersect a unique point Q. But you still would need to check there just to make sure that these are not zero to make that argument work. If K1 was equal to K2 and K1 was zero, well, then you go back up here and that would tell you that A equals A prime, but it, we started out saying that all these points, A prime A, B prime B, B, C prime C are all distinct, they're all different. So K1, K2 can't be zero either. So in any case, there is an argument for this, but it's basically the same argument we did to get this equation, and you're gonna get this equation instead. So let me go ahead and put that up here. And the last thing we want to do is set this equal to this. And again, put the things with primes on one side. So I'll bring over the A here. I have A minus K2C and bring over the K2C prime. So I have A prime minus K2C prime. So that's just rewriting this equals this. And somehow this has to be different because we don't have a place where these two lines AC and A prime C prime intersect. So how is this different? What do we have to change in our argument? So we were saying they intersect at a point infinity, but that's that's not really intersecting in the finite plane. It's a different it's a different object here. So let's see what would happen if we repeated the same argument. We want to take the sum of the coefficients, one minus k two, divide both sides by one minus k two. So t we would take to be minus k two over one minus k two, and we would have t times c here you would have one minus T times A here. And so this would be a point on the line AC. 
And similarly, this would be a point on the line A prime C prime. You would have minus K2 over one minus K2 for T and one over one minus K2 for one minus T. And this would give you a point on the line A prime C prime. And so you would have those equal. And that's where the problem comes in. There is no point that's on both of these lines. They are parallel. Notice you can't use a point at infinity because A and C here are in the finite plane. So they're just coordinates are just numbers. We would have minus K2 over one minus K2 being a number. And so we just get a number when we multiply this out. And so we'd actually have a coordinate, I mean, you know, two coordinates just being numbers. So you'd get some points in the finite plane that equal to a point over here in the finite plane, and one's on line AC, and the other one's on line A prime C prime. And that doesn't happen because these two lines, AC and A prime C prime, were parallel. So that argument doesn't work, and the question is why? I mean, I just went through it, it sounded logical. And the problem is because we might have divided by zero. So K2 minus one, or K one minus K2 when we add these, we don't want to be zero because we just divided by it and that would cause problems. But actually it's the exact opposite situation. If K2 is not one, if one minus K2 is not zero, that causes problems because we just saw that that meant that these two lines had to have an intersection. There, there had to be a point that was on both of these lines. So it's when one minus K2 doesn't equal zero that we're getting in problems because we can repeat the argument we did and we'll get a line, a point on line AC and a point on line A prime C prime, and there is no such point. So it must be the case that K2 actually has to equal one. And so the conclusion down here is that K2, oops, K2 equals one. So we get the K2 has to equal one. Otherwise, we're going to get a point that's on AC and A prime C prime, like we just did earlier, and that point doesn't exist. So in fact, we don't want to be able to divide by one minus K2, or we're going to get in trouble here. So that gives us our third equation. We get that K2 equals one. So let's figure out how we wrap this up. First, I say to use the one and two here to somehow get an equation here that ends with a minus k2c. So how could you get a minus k2c? I just add these because minus k1b and k1b are here, and so you'll just get a minus k2c if you just add these two equations. So what I want to do is add the two equations to get for four here, one minus k1 times p plus k1 minus k2 times q is equal to a minus k2c. So we're going to just add both, both of these, the right-hand sides, now I'm adding the left-hand sides, and I'm getting this. So that's what's going on with 4. Now what about the next step? Next says I want to use 3. So I want to use a k2 equals 1, and I want to use 4 and somehow get an equation here where I factored out a one minus K1. Well, K2 is one, K2 is one here. So if I have a well, K1 minus one, well, that's the same thing as minus one minus K1. So if K1 minus one, that's the same thing as minus one minus K1. So I can factor out a one minus K1 and get here P minus Q. So 1 minus k1 times p comes from this times this. And then we have a, a plus k1 times q, k1 times q, and a minus q, which is the same thing as minus q here, because k2 equals 1. And for uh, this a minus k2c, since k2 is 1, we get a minus c. So again, K2 is one, so they from from three. So I'm just getting A minus C there. And you can see it's a little covered up, but the K1 doesn't equal one. So that means this is non-zero. And so that, the, that means these vectors, one's a multiple of the other one. Well, this is the vector CA, sorry. And this is the vector QP, and one's a multiple of the other one. So the vector CA is a multiple of the vector QP. 
So that means these two vectors are parallel. They're going in the same direction. And that means the lines are parallel or they're equal, which would be OK. But th they're going in the same direction. And that's what we want for this problem. So AC is parallel to PQ. And that was the right conclusion. That finishes this example. And I'll end the lecture here.